were reading what they were reading in that intelligence. And now, now if he's the sole decider, it's scary. Well, and let me just make it a little scarier for you, uh, Dr. Talali. You, you played several clips of what an Illinois state senator thought about the war in Iraq. And he was uh, pitched what, what we would call a softball, uh, a, a very slow-pitch softball by that reporter. I don't know who the reporter was. But the reporter asked him if he would have been in the United States Senate at that time, when two-thirds of Americans were clamoring for war with Saddam Hussein, we are to believe that he would have voted differently than every other member of the Senate who ran for the presidency in 2008. He would have voted differently than Chris Dodd, Joseph Biden, Evan Bayh at one point, Hillary Clinton, John Kerry, John Edwards. Now, if America, if America is willing to believe that, then you've got to understand why America is willing to believe uh, 13 months after the greatest loss of life uh, on our shores uh, since, uh, since uh, well, uh, since December 7, 1941, that they're willing to believe that, that Iraq is the danger to America, more so than Osama bin Laden and al-Qaeda and the Taliban. If America is willing to believe that, that uh, Barack Obama was willing to do that, which none of his compatriots in the Senate who ran for president in 2008 was willing to do, then you have got to understand that's the situation that we were in in October of 2002 when America was willing to believe that there were weapons of mass destruction in okay. so Iraq. The, the question uh, that, that, that kind of pops up here is, who is running the country? I mean, it looks like it doesn't matter if it's a Republican or a Democrat. Somebody is running the country. Who is that entity? Well, that entity, uh, I can, from my personal experience, in October of 2002, with an election less than a month away, the American people were led to believe by the president because of his motivations that I talk about in my book as a result of the intelligence that was proffered and, and, uh, and, uh, and brought to the American people as a result of the people in the Pentagon, which I mentioned in my book, as well as, as you mentioned, the media, uh, and including people that gave very eloquent speeches, uh, such as Senator McCain and Senator Clinton on the floor of the Senate. They were led to believe by a host of people that there were weapons of mass destruction under the con uh, program, an elaborate program. And, and you really, you really, you are satisfied that that's exactly what was the case, or there was something else. Are you satisfied with what you're telling me? that that was the case, they were just given bad intelligence, that there was no other pressures to go that way? No. Once again, Dr. Lally, I will not use the phrase bad intelligence. When, when, when an intelligence agencies are told that, for example, the comrades of Ahmed Shalabi have certain information about a program of weapons of mass destruction, that is intelligence that that has to be uh, examined. Now, on its very, uh, not very far below the surface, you can learn that we don't know where those weapons of mass destruction are. We don't have any hard evidence about their presence there. And, and so it's, once again, it's tenuous at best. But if all you do is take on, on, on surface what all of these entities are telling you then you're going to you're going to be led by the likes of Ahmed Shalabi, uh, George W. Bush, Doug Fife, and Hillary Clinton. And and that and that is the reason that I wrote this book. That okay. ultimately the American people have got to put in the hands of their representatives that they trust the power to do that, which even a vast majority of the American people 
do not believe is the correct thing now, to do. Uh, uh, Congressman. And, and, yes. Uh, uh, let me ask you this. Uh, do you, in your book, do you mention – uh, APAC or the influence that it has on our uh, elected representatives and what APAC's role was in uh, taking the country uh, in a war that was not in the best uh, interest of the country? Well, I don't mention APAC, Dr. Talawi. I did not, in my 12 years as a member of the House of Representatives, have very much encounter with APAC at all. Uh, I do mention a a briefing that Benjamin Netanyahu gave to the House. Uh, and let me just briefly go in that direction, if, if, you, if you will. Sure. Um, today, we, we, if you go back to the time when we were determining that there were no weapons of mass destruction, numerous weapons uh, uh, search teams um, were sent into Iraq after we uh, acquired virtual overall control of the country. Uh, and I talk about a couple of these search teams in my book. They went all over the country, and they could not find a trace of a program of weapons of mass destruction. And, and it was brought up that, that these they had been uh, carted away to Syria. Well, I don't know where that, uh, that very Ill illogical, inane... Uh, topic came from, where that suggestion came from, but it would have been an ideal time, given even in 2004, that the American people supported this foray into Iraq. It would have been a perfect time for the United States military to enter Syria under the, the guise of trying to find weapons of mass destruction and removing that regime from power. We did not. And I can tell you that I believe that the people who wrote uh, uh, a clean break would have loved for that to happen but that didn't happen likewise today we're talking about and we've held talks in Geneva with Iran, high level diplomatic talks, something that I am sure the writers of a clean break the open letter to the president and others disdain the idea of meeting with Iranian officials to talk about nuclear uh, uh, nuclear program so and, and, and if you look at at, Wolf, at Paul Wolfowitz's departure, Doug Fife's departure from the Pentagon, Richard Pearl's testimony before Congress that we should have gotten out after Baghdad fell, you can see underlying all of this that the people that took us to war in Iraq wanted us to go further, but the commander-in-chief uh, did not do so because, quite honestly, he had gotten out of Iraq what he wanted out of Iraq. His okay. desire was not to regime change Syria uh, militarily, his, which he could have done with support of the American people by telling the American people Saddam's weapons of mass destruction are in Syria. He did not do that. And today he is not militarily confronting Iran, uh, as okay. many uh, such as uh, – the neocons are talking about all the time on television. Okay. And and once once again, Doug Fife left, Paul Wolfowitz left. All of these people left when they realized, or after but, they realized. But they left after they left after the objective was already accomplished, which is the removal of Saddam Hussein from power, right? And that yes, and that objective was the objective, the objective that the president of the United States was t thinking about on January okay. 20th, 2001, at his inauguration. Okay, but also that that is the same objective that was in the clean break document, yes. uh, securing the realm. And so what it boils down to, uh, Congressman, is we went and removed uh, Saddam from, uh, from power as an Israeli objective in its own right, as it was stated in that document. Well, it... it, it there was definitely two parties that had a common goal, and the removal of Saddam Hussein from power achieved that common goal. Yeah, because, I mean, you know, I'm looking at these people. They're not here anymore. You know, we are stuck in a quagmire in Iraq, and these people right. who took us there, they're not even nowhere to be found on the scene because uh, they accomplished uh, what they sought after. To